All right, I'm back at it now. So I got some ammo reloaded at this point. Put the chronograph away uh, because right now I'm gonna focus on accuracy with these loads. And so uh, about to shoot one test shot with some factory um, match ammo and then I'll get into the reloads. So I got the target out there at 100 yards and then here I've got the rifle set up uh, uh, a box of match ammo just to start it off with and I got reloads so uh, we got six of H1000 was 67, 67.5, 68, and 68.5 grains. And then we got Rotumbo at 68 to 69 and a half. Uh, we got a coal on these of 3.390, uh, I believe. And so there we have, we got factory ELDMs on the right as and the reloads at the longer coal at uh on the left there all right well i had never actually zeroed this rifle so got it zeroed in with factory ammo well close within uh about a i don't know i would say a third of an moa so now we'll go on to shooting the uh the reloads all right just finished shooting <laughs> look who's coming in <laughs> hello friend all right got the target all done it's interesting to see as the powder charges change how the group moves around the target. Now, I didn't have the most solid stop, so I'm sure we can tighten those groups up a little bit more, but um, it looks like the wiener is uh, right here with um, 69 grains of Rotumbo. So, the other groups, 67 of uh, H1000, 67, 5, 68, and 68, 5 of H1000, and then uh, there's 68 of Rotumbo. 68.5, 69, which looks like definitively the best group, and then 69.5. All right, got the rifle all cleaned and lubed back up, and um, yeah, you know, actually looking at those last two groups, uh, or the one of uh, 68.5 and, and 69 of Rotumbo, uh, they were actually pretty close to the same size. Um, so I think what I'm gonna do, and it, and it was already starting to spread at 69 and a half. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just split the difference between that um, 68 and a half and 69, probably go somewhere around 67, work up a couple more loads and then uh, fine-tune it from there um, it was odd I got some pressure signs at some of the lower loads and then they went away and then at the I just started getting pressure signs at the two top loads again and so I don't know what that's about in inconsistency in the Hornady brass I don't know it was all new brass from one lot um, but the loads that I chose don't seem to have pressure signs at this coal, so uh, at least something went 
fairly easy. <laughs> a little bit more uh, development on that. I did save two of each charge weight um, to do velocity testing with. And so I'll probably really just do the velocity testing uh, through the chronograph on the on the Rotumbo with uh, 68 and a half and 69 and see what that comes out to. I think I, in one of the earlier videos I did it at, uh, at, uh, with a Rotumbo load at 70, but it had a lot of pressure signs and it actually had a little bit, a little bit shorter coal on it. Uh, but I think that was right about 28, 20, something like that feet per second. So we'll see. Uh, I did get a hold of uh, a contact at Garmin though, and uh, to see if they might send me a zero chronograph. And so, got my fingers crossed on that. And if I do get that, uh, I will do a review. So, thanks again for watching. Uh, please hit that like button and uh, subscribe button to help me with my algorithms a bit. Uh, and then I will continue working on this rifle. And then up next, though, is uh, load development for my 338 Lapua. That's fun.